big news related to India's Gaganyaan mission. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has revealed the names of the four astronauts who will be part of the India's manned mission to space Gaganyaan. The names are Group Captain Prashant Balakrishnan Nair, Group Captain Ajit Krishnan, Group Captain Angad Pratap and Wing Commander Shubhanshu Shukla. The Prime Minister reviewed the Gaganyaan mission at Vikram Sarabhai Space Centre where he hailed development in India's space sector. He also inaugurated three ISRO facilities during his visit. All right. 40 years ke baad, koi Bhartiya antriksh mein jane wala hai. Lekin is baar time bhi hamara hai, countdown bhi hamara hai. और रॉकेट भी हमारा है दिस अ गोल्डन डेटर डे फॉर द एंटायर इसरो हैविंग आवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन आवर मिड्स्ट विंग एन इसरो सेंटर एंड फैसिलिटीज टू टेक अ रिव्यू ऑफ द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ गगनयान फॉर वीएसएस इट्स आल्सो अ हिस्टोरिक इवेंट द वेरी फर्स्ट एवर विजिट ऑफ आवर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू दिस सेंटर आफ्टर ऑलमोस्ट 40 इयर्स the significance when pm is dedicating to the nation three of the important major projects of isro which was approved a few years back and completed on time and cost with the vision and support of our honorable prime minister the space sector is going through rapid transformation for expansion unlocking the space sector the new space policy of 2023 all right of course there's a lot to be knowing about what my guest this afternoon jijit nadamuri ravi thinks about it he's a former isro scientist was also part of many gsrv launches and the chandrayaan 1 study phase mr ravi really appreciate you taking the time out and joining us here on mirror now i'm going to come back to you in a couple of uh, minutes to better understand what you think of this but let me cut across to my colleague dipali joining me live from the newsroom dipali this is just such great news as far as india space mission is concerned but for our viewers to better understand this why is it so significant Well, yes, Nivedna, it is a big moment. And in fact, with the landing of Chandrayaan-3 on the south uh, pole of the moon and the launch of the Aditya L1 mission, these two missions were only the beginning of a new chapter for India in the space sector. And next in line is, of course, Gaganyaan. As you rightly mentioned, it is a manned mission to the space where, the, uh, uh, where humans will be carried to a 400-kilometer altitude low Earth orbit. And after three days, they will return back. But why is this mission important? Let's talk about that. I am sure we fondly remember Rakesh Sharma. He's the first Indian astronaut who traveled on a Russian spacecraft to space. This was back in 1984. And that one beautiful memory from that time is etched in our hearts even after 40 years, which was when then Prime Minister Srimati Indra Gandhi asked them, Bharat upar se kaisa dikta hai? And Rakesh Sharma replied, Sare jahan se acha. So, of course, India is deliberately and eagerly waiting to recreate that memory, to recreate that moment. And secondly, this is not a, any conventional mission. You know, from human space flight to eventually creating human uh, settlements to human habitats in space, it will showcase India's uh, potential in doing so. And of course, thirdly, it will also pave the way for India to make its own space station by 2035, which it's planning and eventually landing the moon, uh, landing people on the moon by 2040. Well, Prime Minister uh, said it himself, this is India's time, India's countdown, and of course, India's rocket. So all the best to ISRO and all the Indians as 140 crore people join hands for one single dream. Back to you. Absolutely, Dipali. Well, rightly put, we leave it at that. But let me go back to my guest who continues to stay with us. Mr. Ravi, of course, we heard Dipali telling us what we should know about it. But in your opinion, of course, the way the Indian um, you know, space sector has changed over the past couple of years. But just quickly talking about Gaganyaan Mission, in your opinion, what makes this so unique? Yeah, it's kind of an exciting, uh, I would say, like uh, electric kind of... Uh... Uh, like events that are happening and even uh, I was also not having a clue that uh, the PM will be announcing the uh, astronauts uh, for the mission because then it means that uh, everything is green. 
like uh, uh, a week back we got the mm. the test uh, that the last test of the the cryo stage which also green and all the, now the all astronauts also uh, seems to be healthy and uh, have done their training and that is the indication that uh, we have uh, uh, today uh, we have this announcement from the prime minister and i congratulate all the the four astronauts uh, who have been uh, like they are going to be heroes like uh, the pandavas and <laughs> something like that uh, they will be remembered for a long period of time like uh, something like rakesh sharma that we had now we have four astronauts who are already they're qualified to be flying into the gagayan mission and so i this is a kind of a moment of mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of uh, a kind of strange and uh, very kind of strange sensation and uh, a happy moment for anybody associated with uh, isro including me so that's what i would say uh, great great event and more events to come Absolutely, Mr. Ravi. And as you point that out as to what more one can expect, um, just for our viewers to better understand this, right? We have seen in the past how certain uh, missions have not really gone uh, the right way, and then we've of course seen success. As far as Gaganyaan is concerned, what are the challenges that we're looking at? Yes, we uh, are right. Uh, so the missions are not very easy. I mean, easy to talk about, but to execute it's all extremely hard. So that's why we have different stages uh, uh, for the Gaganyan mission. Uh, even the, the last three stages are mentioned uh, or named as uh, the Gaganyan one, two, three, and the third stage is when the actual human flight will take place. But uh, before that, there are around twelve, uh, more than or maybe uh, close to six to twelve kind of. Uh, uh, preparatory missions uh, we started from uh, uh, like uh, uh, the re-entry re -entry kind of a test even I was also part of uh, that in uh, in a, when I was in ISRO the space capsule recovery and uh, reusable launch vehicle kind of uh, missions so the advanced version of that we have seen in the last uh, few years and then um, we had uh, the kind of uh, cryogenic test that is how long the the cryo stage can uh, like uh, which uh, like uh, continue uh, is firing uh, within a simple manner so that is what we have seen in the in just uh, one week ago so all these uh, tests they have uh, uh, separated out from the actual mission where you get healthy parameters and any kind of uh, errors or any kind of uh, issues the, that may occur in an actual launch they are all sorted out uh, in all these uh, you know, 6 to 12 kind of uh, sessions we have seen the last one uh, the about the cryo stage last week so i don't see i mean um, of course these are all the risks and uh, every time whenever there is something wrong happens the scientists are there to analyze the data and uh, also the machines etc to rectify it so i don't see any kind of uh, problem because uh, we our preparation isro's preparations are first class if you if you remember chandrayaan 3 we had a competition from uh, russia and then Absolutely. how the russian mission in the last minute failed but we were successful because we had the homework and we had done the homework with uh, the previous missions so that way i don't see any kind of problem and even if i if i can tell a few few things more the we our uh, the, the last but one mission as uh, before the man mission will be like a, uh, a mission in which uh, you have a kind of a robot uh Mitra, who will uh, the robot uh, she will be flying in that and get understanding about the kind of all the human uh, factor parameters uh, uh, inside the the, cr the crew module so that all that learnings you can get uh, from this uh, robotic mission so isro is uh, you know very particular about not sending any animal or anything uh, living being into the space for experimentation so this is a, again a wonderful uh, point of view or the the approach that isro has taken Absolutely, Mr. Ravi, as you better help us understand that. It seems like deja vu because we remember what we were uh, discussing when Chandrayaan happened as well. Um, but before I let you go, a quick question about the fact that how my colleague Dipali also pointed out what the Prime Minister said, that it's India's time and we're going to be launching uh, this mission this time around. For someone like you, who's of course worked in Israel, been part of such important projects, how have you, you know, really looked at India's journey in the space sector? There's no stopping them, clearly. Yeah, I think uh, the scientists were really enthusiastic even from the very beginning. If uh, if you go back to the Abdul Kalam days, they were actually don't have a, even a carry vehicle for carrying the 
the the the rohini rockets uh, so that they have taken it in a bicycle so that is the kind of uh, energy that uh, the team isro is having right from the days of uh, saraba and of the kalam but definitely there was there was uh, like national re- leadership i would say political leadership uh, was not very much well aligned with that same kind of energy but now i see that the political leadership is also mm-hmm. equally enthusiastic and energetic and that is the reason why you see continuous isro is always in the news with uh, new and new things uh, that uh, the, the the nation can be proud of and it happening quite often and like you, you are talking about in in terms earlier it was like once in a year or maybe once in five years now it's happening every month and uh, everybody is looking at that isro twitter handle to see you know what is happening today so that's a kind of speed and uh, pace that uh, i can see because this is happens when uh not only isro but the political leadership the national leadership and the entire country is aligned with uh, this the the enthusiasm and the pace in which things are progressing so it's probably right to say that it's the synergy that's giving india the energy especially as far as the space sector is concerned but mr ravi appreciate you taking the time out and joining us here this afternoon but for the moment we're going to leave the conversation at that we're shifting our focus now to news that we're tracking across the country